Hello and welcome to today's Q&A. The questions are how do you approach dealing with nerves in performance? Do you have any advice for building confidence in a performance setting? And in your experience, what is the best way you overcome performance anxiety? I'm really looking forward to speaking about this topic. I actually received many questions related to this topic, but I chose these three because I thought they encompassed what most people wanted to hear me talk about. First, I'm gonna give three to four short and sweet answers to each of these questions, and then I'm going to move into a more detailed discussion. So first, how do I recommend approaching dealing with nerves in performance? Number one, develop a centering pre-performance and a centering practice routine. Number two, set meaningful and personally empowering performance intentions and stay focused on them. Number three, know what variables, physical, mental, emotional, will be coming into play and how to navigate them. Okay, second question. Do you have any advice for building confidence in a performance setting? Yes, number one, develop your confidence by knowing yourself well, understanding how your psyche and your body work. Number two, be really clear on what the necessary skills and attributes of confident performance are and work out a plan to develop them. Three, practice performing and performance skills often and during the right time in your performance cycle. And four, watch, study, creep on, obsess over amazing performers. How do they move? What do they do? What about their performance really draws you in? And then emulate them. And the third question, in your experience, what is the best way to overcome performance anxiety? So experience, skill, and time. And time because so much of it is about learning how to hold hands with the fearful parts of yourself growing those parts and channeling the energy that shows up in performance. Then secondly, learning how to center yourself and finally having a really empowering intention. So if you stop by for the quick tour of the topic, that was it. We're going to move now into deeper discussion on the topic and I recommend taking notes. This is pretty heady stuff. If you're taking notes, you'll wanna make three columns a topic column, a know yourself column, and a grow yourself column. We're gonna start with a brief discussion about demands of performance and optimal performance states, and then move to psychological and mental aspects of performance energy, including fear, goals, intentions, and outcomes, and mental thinking patterns. And then we'll talk about the physical and psychological aspects of performance energy, including performance diet, performance environment, activities and routine, and performance skills preparation. After exploring all of those topics, I'm going to give you a bonus tip. Okay, so let's start with a very brief discussion about the demands of performance, the demands of being a performer. There are psychological demands, physical demands, environmental demands. And for each one of these, there are skills and attributes that we need to have to be really successful performers. So the first thing under know yourself is to figure out what the attributes and skills are that are needed and where you stand in terms of each of these. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? It's really important to have a very clear picture of this. Some examples include determination, resilience, authenticity, drive, humility, stamina, courage, hardworkingness, stick to itiveness, organization, and the list goes on. Then, under grow yourself, you're going to want to make a list of all of these attributes, where you stand in terms of strength and weakness, or I don't have it at all, and then create a plan to develop all of these skills and attributes. Next, it's really important to get a very clear idea about what the optimal performance state looks like for you. 
So get a clear picture of what this is, what it looks like, what it feels like, what it tastes like, and why being in an optimal performance state is so valuable for you. What specifically is the mental, physical, and emotional state that you want to be in? Are you mentally focused? Does time feel distorted? Are you aware of nervous energy when you're in this state? What adjectives describe it for you? Would you use energized, focused, creative, enjoyable, open to new ideas? Certain things fall into the periphery. What environmental factors support the optimal state of performance for you? What factors challenge it? Figure out what potentially could get in the way for you. What distractions? What fears specifically? Do certain activities, certain kinds of people, certain ways of talking challenge your optimal state? Basically, figure out what you need to do or develop in yourself so that you can access your optimal performance state. And then under optimal performance state, once you've done this self inventory and you know yourself, then you head over to the grow yourself column. This is like the to do column, the things that you'll do to grow yourself and develop your skills. So kind of briefly, here are some of the tips I recommend. Number one, create a visualization practice that is highly detailed. This includes every aspect of your optimal performance zone description. Then create affirmations that support that description and work your affirmations. Affirmations should always be first person, present tense, and positive. So you never use the word no or not. Then you're going to want to create opportunities to practice and experience this performance state. Note what it felt like, journal about it, and recreate those experiences as much as possible. Fourth, you'll want to create intentions and tasks in your daily routine. Daily, not just the night before the performance, the week before the performance, but daily routine that support and get you into this state so that it's always a part of your daily routine. And then finally, create a plan for how you will attend to the challenges that don't support this optimal state. So let's move next to the psychological and mental aspects of performance, starting with the topic of fear. We'll talk about perspectives on fear, what drives fear, how does fear manifest physically, what triggers it, and what does the fear voice say? So again, starting with know yourself. What is your perspective on fear? Do you think fear is something to be avoided, overcome, conquered, embraced? What is your perspective? And then some tips for under grow yourself. Explore different perspectives on fear. Read about it. What do the studies say? What does research say? What are some skills for dealing with fear? Practice responding differently to fear. Be humorous about it. Be nonchalant about it. Be all knowing about it. Be compassionate about it. And then another tip is to take the approach that you're going to make friends with fear. Make friends with the part of yourself that feels afraid. Grow that part of yourself. Don't ignore it. Don't be mad at it. Make friends with it. I also recommend making counter statements and affirmations about those perspectives on fear. Like I can be afraid and I can be courageous or I can be afraid and I can grow tremendously from how I handle my fears. And finally, in terms of perspective, understand that the emotion of fear is not going to go away. It's a human emotion. It will pop its head up many different times in many different ways and across many different subjects throughout our lifetime. We've talked about fear and perspectives we have about fear. Next, in terms of knowing yourself, it's really important to understand what drives your fear. Like what dangers do you feel you're most likely to encounter? What do you see as the most dangerous scenarios? What do you think will happen to you if that thing happens, both immediately short-term, mid-term, and long-term. Really spend some time looking at what's driving your fear. And then grow yourself. So answer these questions, challenge your answers, talk to your mentors, talk to your friends, journal about it, and then plan the work and work the plan. Then there are the manifestations of fear. So once again, knowing yourself, you know, what are the physical, manifestations of this hormonal cocktail 
this way that fear manifests itself in our bodies. Does your mouth get dry? Do you get like jittery? Do you get sweaty palms? Do you get cold hands? Do you get hot feet? How does it manifest? And also something that people don't always think about is know what your post rush drop is going to feel like. So what I mean by that is like, after the concert, after the performance, after the accomplishment of this thing that you've done, what happens physically to your body? Do you burst into tears? Do you get depressed? Do you feel extra low the next day? Do you feel like crawling into a hole and just being quiet for a week? What is that post rush drop like for you? And then next, learn what works for you in terms of managing the energy of this hormonal cocktail. Energy has to go somewhere. So if you're backstage, what works? Do you like to do jumping jacks? Do you like to shake your hands out? How can you navigate this energy in your body? Tips for growing yourself in terms of how fear manifests physically, create a pre-performance routine, learn how to center yourself, prepare physically. This can mean that you bring water, that you chew gum, that you bring little heat packs to hold in your hands if your hands go cold, and learn how to keep the physical manifestations of fear in the periphery. So while you're performing, you can feel it, you can focus on it, or you can feel it and you can sort of push it off into the periphery and get your mental focus where it needs to be while all of this physical hormonal cocktail manifestation stuff is happening. So we've talked about our perspectives on fear, what drives the fear, how it manifests physically, and next it would be really good to take a look at what triggers fear for you and how to grow yourself so that you can handle it well. For some people hearing, wow, you're gonna be amazing, I can't wait for your concert, can actually trigger a fear response. Is it the consequence level of the event that's triggering your fear? Is it the people you're playing with that triggers fear? Could you be coasting along, playing this beautiful slow section, but you know that other section is coming up and you feel a fear trigger response? So in terms of growing yourself on this one after knowing yourself, you're going to want to make a list of what those fear triggers are and then come up with a plan for addressing each one of them. I recommend creating an affirmation for each fear trigger situation. That includes affirmations that you would write in your score and every day that you practice and you pass that section in the score, you pause, you think about, or you come back to that affirmation. So you'll create affirmations for how you deal with each of these fear triggers and then you'll plan ahead for how you're going to deal with some of them. This could be letting your friends know that you won't be able to speak or message on your phone for the afternoon, telling people that you don't want them coming backstage, you know, letting your mom, your grandma, your grandpa, your family members know that before this big event that you're not going to be going out and eating a big meatball and spaghetti dinner with them. Yeah, so plan ahead to deal with the things that trigger your fear and keep a journal. As you're exploring all of these things about yourself, as you're trying new things out, journal. Keep yourself in the know on how it's going and then look back and see what did work, what didn't work, and you'll notice the progress that you've made and it will be inspiring. And now let's take a look at the voice of fear. This is really important. This is like all of the words that are running through your head, all of the thoughts, you know, what does fear say to you? What does the voice sound like? Does it whisper? Does it nag? Does it ruminate? Does it sort of cook in the background while you're doing all of this other stuff? How does the voice of fear show up for you personally? Know that about yourself, notice it, develop an understanding. And then in terms of growing yourself when it comes to the voice of fear, you know, some tips that I have is first of all, acknowledge it. Be like, oh, that's fear. That's fear speaking. Yep. Nice to hear you. I see that you've just showed up at my doorstep. Could you please take a seat? Can I get you some coffee? How can I help you today, fear? 
And a great tip for dealing with this is to speak the words of fear out loud, not just speak them, write them down. So all the little things that are running in the background of your head, mumbling, whispering, you're so used to them that you don't notice them sometimes, like spew them out, you know, get them out on paper. I mean, fear just told me that if I have a memory lapse in this part of the concerto, I will never make it as a musician. Did you just say if I play out of tune in that section, nobody will ever want to play with me again? I hear that you just said that after spending six months and many, many hours of practice preparing for this audition, that the likelihood of me falling flat on my face in that one excerpt is really high. Then after you've spoken the voice out loud and written it down, then give it some time, you know, talk to it, actually respond to your fear. One of the reasons we move into rumination and the sort of like steady babbling in the background is because we don't actually take time to sit down with fear and have a conversation with it. It's amazing what wonders can be worked if you actually do that. And the great thing about that is that when it does interrupt you and it is ruminating and it starts its chatter back up again, you can say, would you please sit down? We're not having that conversation right now. We'll talk again at 8.30 tonight. And you can plan a time and literally just set time aside to say, this is when I'm going to deal with the voices in my head, the fear that's running through my head. And right now is not the time for that. And then a final tip, and I've mentioned this a few times, is the importance of affirmations. I recommend taking a piece of paper, folding it in half, putting a seam through it, draw a line down the middle, and on one side put the fear voices and what the fears are, and on the other side put your responses and the affirmations that help you feel better and put you in a better place to reach your optimal performance state. So that was the psychological and mental aspect of fear. It's a huge topic. I didn't get into it as much as I could have, but I hope that that was helpful. So next, Let's move to goals, intentions, and outcomes. I mean, this is a really important part of the psychological and mental aspect and arena that is an important part of performance energy, performance anxiety, and the optimal state of performing. So again, you wanna know yourself and grow yourself and really understand the realm of your goals, your intentions, and your desired outcomes. What are your goals? What are your intentions? What are your desired outcomes for being a performer? What lies underneath these? Why do you desire this? What are your deepest core values and how do these affect your goals? Are you intrinsically or extrinsically motivated or both? How will realizing these goals and outcomes influence your life? What's the buy-in for you? And then under grow yourself, Make sure goals are realistically scaffolded and manageable. Short-term, mid-term, long-term goals. Another tip is to make sure that your goals and intentions include attributes like courage and outcomes like growth and progress and keep track of your goals, keep track of your intentions. You know, these things can change throughout time set them, put them in place, read about goal setting skills, read about the psychology of achievement, read about strategies for succeeding at the goals that you've set. And then as a final tip, try different goals on for size. Like mm, today I'm gonna wear pink. So at this concert, my goal is to be primarily focused on looking out and connecting with the audience. Or maybe you're gonna kill it in one aspect of stage deportment. Or perhaps your goal is to focus on breathing. Whatever it is, set different goals, try different goals out. This makes it really fun and it definitely helps you with this grow yourself component to goal setting. Okay, so next we have mental thinking patterns. We've already done a little bit of discussion about thinking and the words and you know how those words affect our emotions, but this is a topic that needs its own category. And again, you have to know yourself and grow yourself when it comes to mental thinking patterns. Okay, so what is there to know about yourself when it comes to mental thought patterns? First, you wanna become aware of what your thought patterns 
are and what they tend to be in certain situations. Do they support your desired outcomes or do they sabotage your ability to be happy and realize your goals? Here are some examples of mental thought patterns that might ring a bell for you. Number one, black and white thinking. It was either a good performance or it was a bad performance. It's either all or it's nothing. Dismissing or disqualifying positive information. So somebody compliments you on something and in your head you just dismiss it because you're busy thinking about the negatives. I loved your concert, your Bach was beautiful. Yes, my Bach may have been beautiful, but magnification or minimization, when you take one thing that happens and you just blow it out of proportion, okay? It was one note, or maybe it was two notes, but it's become magnified into this awful experience and into this awful performance that you gave. Another mental thought pattern that is a trap to our success is emotional reasoning. This is when we take the way we feel or the way we felt about something and we hold it as a truth for what happened. It was an awful performance. I could feel that it was awful. That's an example of emotional reasoning. So next we're going to move to the physical and physiological arena. And this includes some discussion about diet, environment, activities and routine, and skills and preparation. So under diet, in terms of knowing yourself, this is a really important area for you to get very familiar with how your body reacts to certain foods. I've already mentioned the term hormonal cocktail and we've talked about how thoughts can trigger emotions. Well, food and what we actually physically put into our body and the chemistry of the interaction of the food in our body is a huge and very important area for us to be focused on as performers. How do certain foods impact my focus? How do certain foods impact my energy? What are the best foods for me to be eating the month before a big performance, the week before a big performance, the day of the performance? Really know what works for your body. And to do this, you just have to try things out. You have to journal, you have to note, you have to go up and down in terms of the experience and see what works and doesn't work for you. And there's also a lot of good literature on how food affects cortisol, adrenaline, and other hormonal levels in our system. So in terms of tips for this, create calendar plans, set alarms, create meal plans, let your friends know who may wanna feed you and support you in the day of your big event what works for you and what you're eating that day. The only way to know what works for you is to try different things out. And another big tip I have on this one is don't change your pattern the day of a big event. And I'll share one little story with you. I was coming down with a cold one day and I decided that I was going to take a ton of vitamin C because I heard that vitamin C can help me fight the cold. And I had a concert that night and by the time the concert started, my mouth was so dry that I couldn't articulate and I couldn't create my sound the way I normally created it. So never try something for the first time the day of an important event. Know what works for your body, set a plan, get organized, and stick to it. And in terms of environment, activities, and routine, you know, what works best for you? What is the impact of noise in your environment? What is the impact of certain people in your energy bubble? What activities do you need to be involved in the day of a big event? Personally, I like to take the entire day off. I have a routine where I go outside in the morning. I might go for a little run. I like to take a nap even if I don't sleep, put myself in prone position, get my blood flowing a certain way. And I like to be very organized and very detailed in the way I plan out my day. Um, the day of a big event. I make sure that I'm pretty much unplugged from media that day. I don't engage in any energy or time consuming activities or discussions. I like to be quiet. I like to meditate. I like to review my scores. Those are the activities that work for me. What works for you? That's what you have to figure out. And once you have that, then work the plan. Get it all organized, know what it is, write it down and stick to it. 
And we're now on the final section of the physical, physiological arena, and that is the skills and preparation section. In terms of knowing yourself, okay, so what skills do you have? What attributes do you have? What skills do you need to develop? Do you need to develop your memory skills, your stage deportment skills, your ability to speak from the stage, your concentration, your focus, your breathing while you perform? What are the skills that you need to develop? And then in terms of attributes, where do you stand with that? You know, are you somebody who really needs to develop courage? Are you someone who needs to develop confidence? Are you excellent at determination and stick to but are you perhaps lacking in organization and positive mental thinking? And in terms of skill building and preparation, like motor skills that are associated with your instrument and tone production and musicality, all of these also need to be assessed. What practice skills work for you? What area of technique are you lacking in that you're trying to develop? And what seems to work best for getting you where you need to be? And what doesn't work? What kind of preparation and practice and training definitely doesn't work for you. And once you know that, then you can move to the next step of growing yourself and applying things and really continuing to develop your capabilities of entering into that optimal performance space. So in terms of growing yourself and tips and creating a plan, the first step would be to create a list of those skills and attributes and then put a plan into action and follow through with it. Learn about practice strategies. Try all kinds of training methods out. Talk to your mentors, talk to your friends and see what works for them. And then a really important tip is to prepare in advance. And I don't just mean practice your instrument. I mean, get into bigger spaces. If you're in a room where you practice that's kind of small and you suddenly have to move into this huge room with 5,000 seats and you've never been in the hall before and maybe you do or don't have a warm-up time in the space, then do something else. Go see some concerts in that hall. See if you could just get in there and walk around. Or if that isn't an opportunity, imagine that you're in a bigger space in your small practice room. But the idea is to plan ahead and to try and put yourself into that space and into that situation so that you're ready to reach your optimal state of performance video record yourself, make a plan to perform that goes from the least challenging, so maybe playing for some friends, all the way up to a more challenging situation until you finally reach the most challenging situation and feel really comfortable because you've actually planned ahead. Finally, make visualization a really big part of your training strategy. Make affirmations a part of your training strategy every day. It should just be the way you operate. Where are you in your mind? How are you visualizing? How are you thinking? What are your affirmations? Are you putting them into practice? Are you speaking them? Are you writing them over and over again? Make it part of the way you prepare. Okay, so I promised a bonus tip. And the bonus tip is to think about and craft the way we show up ourselves as audience members. So if you go to 80 concerts a year and at every one of those concerts, you're being critical and you're thinking negatively or you're thinking certain ways or certain mental thought patterns are there, or you're not using that time to just give energy to the performer and support them and enjoy the music and let the music touch you and sort of be in the energy of the entire situation of the performance, then you're missing out on a really important opportunity to create an arena that becomes the arena you're in as a performer when you step on stage. So one of the things I really love to do when I'm in concerts, regardless of what kind of concert it is, whether it's a rock concert, a bluegrass concert, a student recital, a colleague's performance, a concerto, I love to just feed the performers my support, feed them energy, feed them stamina, feed them creativity, so that I'm actually taking part in what's happening in the concert. And then I trust that what will happen in exchange is that when I walk out on stage, 
that energy will be there for me. It will be there for me because I create it when I'm in the hall and it will be there for me because I believe that the universe will give it back to me. And that energy is like a battery. It's like something that you wanna plug into because it's one of the most refueling, exciting sources of power for you as a performer to tap into and be a part of in order to reach your optimal performance state and bring the beauty of your music into the world.